Hey guys, before we get back to it and work on all the things on the plane, I just wanted to touch base with you and show you something that just came in. And that's regarding this piece right here. So they've, they've released a service bulletin basically saying that people are seeing cracking on this piece. Now, this is the vertical stabilizer, it goes on the back of the plane, you can't miss it. Um, and these are the stops on either side. And apparently this white piece right here, um, they're, they're seeing some cracking in here. And even though I don't have any cracking yet because, well, my plane hasn't flown, while I've got it in this state, I cannot think of a better time than making this repair. So uh, I'm going to order the replacement part, which I think is both of these. I'm not sure if it's just the top or both. I, I think it's both. Um, drill these off, uh, off the back. It's just a couple rivets that I have to drill out. Pull these off, replace the part, and put it back on so that it will never be a problem on my plane. I would re recommend you doing the same thing if you're in the middle of building something and or building one of these planes and a service bulletin's come out. If your plane is still on the ground, just do the bulletin. Don't like wait for cracking to happen. You're just asking for trouble. So anyways, thought I'd mention that. I'll put a link down below to the service bulletin. And when I do the repair, I'll, of course, I'll talk to it. I still have to order the part. So anyways, all right, let's get to work on the plane. Okay, step one is always the same when I come back out to the hangar after not being here for, for a week. I got a new job, so I'm running around like a crazy man programming for a bunch of really cool people. I really like it so far. Hopefully they, uh, they keep me. Um, but anyways, after a week, I come out here and I'm like, where was I? And it's like, oh yeah. So basically what I'm doing here is I need to go and finish cutting the holes for the uh, laundrons and putting these bolt in, bolts in on both sides. So there's four bolts that go... Uh, hold both sides together so so if for those of you that are wondering how the empennage attaches to the rest of the plane and not be you know floppy whoppy uh, that's how heavy duty bolts uh, so I need to finish putting those bolt holes in enlarge them get the bolts in and actually get this sucker permanently attached although I will be taking that out like I said I've still got to do all the dimpling and whatnot but that's where I'm at right now so let's get back to that but first I thought I'd share with you guys something really cool that's coming up. Take it away, Ryan. What's up, Av Geeks? My name is Ryan from Super Aero Live, and I'm really excited to be hosting a round table with these four super awesome aircraft builders. Hey everybody, this is Gil from the Build Fly Go channel. You may have seen Mary and I fly our RV9A uh, across the US and to some fun, warm international destinations. We have videos about our flights, of course, and also our RV-10 build, uh, which is the other aircraft we're building right now. It's uh, currently at the fuselage phase, and we have time lapses with commentary of the entire build process. We also have videos on how-tos on basic airplane building technique, some avionics use and commentary and reviews, and really any excuse to go fly. You'll see everything from a big international trip to a trip around the local patch in the pattern to get fuel or whatnot. We look forward to hearing your questions and uh, talking to you on the Builder Roundtable. Hey everyone, I'm Christine from Plane Lady and on my YouTube and Instagram, I document as we slow build our entire RV-10. We're a little over a year into our build and we have finished the empennage kit, the wing kit, and we're into the fuselage kit. I try and document any shortcomings we might have along the way, as well as any helpful tips or tricks that we've picked up on and other really helpful things that we've learned from other builders out there. I also have videos about different air shows that we've been to, like Air Venture up in Oshkosh and things like general aviation camping, what you might expect and what you might want to bring. I really love sharing the excitement and the adventure of this whole build experience with everybody out there. And I'm really looking forward to hearing the questions that you have and doing my best to try to help answer them for you. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jason Ellis and like you, I am an aviation enthusiast that decided one day that I really wanted to fly and really wanted to own my own airplane, but didn't have the bottomless pit of wealth required to buy that high performance aircraft. So uh, I decided to go the experimental aviation route. Uh, I purchased a Vans RV-10 kit and I've been at it for five years at this point. And you know, honestly, I'm still learning new things. It's been a great journey. I've been documenting all of it on my YouTube channel. I'm trying to do so in an approachable way. I am not an expert, 
but rather a guy with a dream and a pile of parts and I'm always available to answer questions. And so I think this is an awesome opportunity to chat with y'all and I can't wait to see what y'all come up with. And I'm Steve from the Flight Chops channel. I've got over 200 episodes covering all sorts of different flying adventures and flight training. And recently I've started a side stream of content focusing on following the process of building a Vans aircraft RV-14 with an awesome team of guys from the Canadian Historical Aircraft Association. So I'm really looking forward to learning from the builders on this panel. It's going to be hosted by Ryan on the Super Aero channel. So look for the link on all of our various social medias. I hope you guys check it out. So yeah, that happened. Can't wait. If you guys have any questions for the four of us, your round table discussion, post them down below and I will add the questions to the queue and hopefully we'll get to answer some of those things live and in real time on his channel. All right, let's get back to work. One of the things you have to do in the background you can see here um, is build a little piece, a little shim, if you will, out of some scrap skin in this case that will go over that little square you see or rectangle there. Basically, the idea is when you lay that top skin down, if you don't have just the barest little bit of extra skin there, um, it will cause the, the, the skin to push in when you're doing the final riveting, which we don't want. We want it to be flush. And it's just a matter of making a small, just tiniest little shim that goes there. And I, you can see here I've labeled it and I just double stuck it on with some two-sided tape, uh, then drilled the holes that are necessary in order to complete that part. There's like three holes in it. And then, yeah, so not a big deal, but that's what that is. So, um, this piece of skin has been sitting in the corner patiently waiting for me to get to it for over five years. Uh, this is part of the empennage. This is the forwardmost top skin of the empennage. And you can tell that I did this a long time ago because I still have this bluing on where I had used a soldering iron to just cut off the pieces that I wanted, thinking that I needed to leave the rest of it protected. Um, a lot of people say don't do that because of exactly what I'm experiencing now. And that is that getting this bluing off is a pain in the ass. Um, <clears throat> for whatever reason, this bluing doesn't really want to come off. It, it's constantly ripping, you know, and it's, it's real fragile. So you just, I'm, I'm just constantly having to just sit here, pick at it to get it off. Um, and I've been at it for a little while and you can see right there. I mean, it just rips. It just pulls right off real or, or rips, you know, and prevents from coming off cleanly like all the rest of it does. Um, so this is something, like I said, that I did in the beginning, thinking that it was necessary to protect this skin from scratches and whatnot. And I just, I just don't think it's necessary, especially considering what's going to happen to this plane um, prior to paint, you know, it's going to be basically gone over with a Brillo pad. So, um, you don't need to do this to protect the skin. I think I've said that before, but, uh, previously I had said that, eh, no big deal one way or the other. And I didn't think it was going to be a problem because I wasn't having exactly this issue, but I guess I just, not enough time had passed. So anyway, I'm going through right now. And I'm pulling, you know, all this bluing off, getting the skin ready to go on top of the plane. And then I think probably the next step is going to be a lot of dimpling and more hole drilling. So, yeah. But this sucks. Which I'm trying to be gentle, but it just doesn't want to come off. And then I'm going to go through and I'll wipe all this off. I'll get, I'll get my... Uh, my stuff of acetone and wipe all this off and clean it. So don't be overly concerned about getting scratches on your skin. It's just not a big deal. Real quick regarding that service bulletin on that aft bracket where they're seeing some crap, uh, cracking, I have gone through and ordered the replacement part from Vans. Unfortunately, they are out of stock. So that means you guys are all doing your due diligence and ordering the part as soon as it came out and good for you. Uh, like I said, it's one of those things that we need to quickly replace this stuff because we do not want these things falling out of the sky. So as soon as I get that part, I will go ahead and make that change. Um, I just don't have it yet. Hopefully it'll be back in stock soon. 
All right, back to it. All right, so I'm still working on everything, going through, putting Clecos in, getting everything lined up, doing all the match drilling and whatnot. And I've discovered that I have one spot right on the baggage door, that lower part of the baggage door you can see here, where I have a tiny bit of oil canning. You can see how it kind of pops in and pops out. I'm not really sure why I have that. Um, and I don't know if it goes away down the road. Like I haven't looked too far ahead in the plans to see if I put a stiffener or anything right there to kind of make that go away. But if I don't, I will be putting a stiffener there, stiffener there to make it go away. We don't want any oil canning. That's the only place I've gotten it so far. Um, I'm trying to think if there was any place else. I don't think so. So anyways, that's something that will be addressed. Uh, we don't want that at all. R reason for that is uh, repeated oil canning on your aircraft anywhere can actually cause metal fatigue. And that's the last thing we want around metal fatigue and we definitely don't want it near like a door. So uh, other than that, Everything is coming together very nicely. Uh, I think that the, the, the assembling of the two parts together, the fuselage and empennage, while certainly painful to do as a solo, um, eh, it's coming together nicely. So it's just a matter of doing the work. But anyways, gonna address the oil canning and then well, keep plugging away. All right, mistake admitting time. Now this mistake goes all the way back to when I was actually creating the empennage. Um, it has to do with these J channel stiffeners that go in across, well, pretty much everywhere in the empennage. And what I had done is I had misunderstood what it was asking me to do. And I, I made a cut that was incredibly aggressive. Now these three J channel stiffeners that are up here at the top run the entire length of the top of the empennage. And what I had done right here at the end of it where it connects to this rib, and I'm using this as an example, I had cut, and now it, it talks about cutting just a little bit off here so that it kind of lines up and doesn't butt up against that. But what I had done, as you can see here, I had cut these incredibly aggressively. And the problem with that is it doesn't quite meet up to where the hole is on this rib. Got to fix that. Um, the middle one isn't so bad, but I'm probably gonna do it there this there too. So what I have done is I have created from some scrap, just a short piece of stiffener that I can put up in here and Clico it in place. And that means I'm gonna have to use a slightly longer rivet and whatnot on the underside. But as you can see over on this one, it just, it just extends it a little farther and gives me more purchase on this rib. I'm gonna do it across all three of them and that will make me much more happy. Um, there's just, there, there wasn't enough meat in the J channel um, to, to, to really make me happy. So now this, this is better, this is a better solution. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see any problem with it. So doing that across those three, this will increase the strength and in the end, things will be better. Mistakes are gonna happen. Don't freak out if you make a mistake, you can always fix it. In this case, this is a mistake I made five plus years ago and I'm only getting to it now because I wasn't exactly sure, I knew I was gonna have to do this, but I wasn't exactly sure how far I had to do it and I didn't wanna bother until I got there. So uh, I actually had some of this J channel sitting by the, you know, in a box of you, you, you will use this, you know, sort of thing. So I'm gonna put this one in, it's already drilled and ready to go and then do the middle one and good to go. So yeah, just thought I'd mention that. All right, and there you have it. Um, so at this point, I have everything done with the empennage attached to the fuselage and now it's time to pull everything off, take the skin off, pull all these clecos and take it apart. Um, it's the part I always dread, the putting together, then the taking apart just to do stuff to put it right back together. I wish there was a way to put it together one time and then that's it, but there's not. So uh, also, quick note, I had talked about earlier the oil canning right here. You can hear there's no oil canning now and it's because I hadn't put this piece in place. This is several steps ahead, but I just I flipped ahead to look to say, hey, is there a thing? And there's a thing. So. So this is, once this is in place, all oil canning goes away. So we're back to being good to go. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna pull all the Clecos, pull all everything and everything and everything and separate. 
Uh, and that's going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to, yeah, got to think this through. Slowly, I'm going to take the skin off. Then I'm going to set my table back up underneath here so that I have, you know, have a way to catch it, pull all the Clecos, and then take the two apart. So that's where we're at. That's what we're going to do. And then it's, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm 100% sure. Then it's going to be doing the standard deburr, clean up all the holes that you've now drilled, um, uh, probably some machining countersinking and dimpling of everything. And then I'm gonna guess we're gonna do, put it all back together. I'm not sure if we're gonna do the baggage floor first and then put it together or put it together and do the baggage floor. I don't know, we'll have to see. Uh, I do know I need to run some more shark bite uh, conduit underneath this, bef the, the baggage floor before I put the baggage floor in so that I have lots of places for wiring to go. So that's coming here shortly. So yeah, oh, it never ends. All right, here we go. Well, there you go. Uh, another productive day out in the hangar. I have it pulled apart now and I've gone through and I've started cleaning up all the holes, especially around the laundrons and uh, around the skins. There's several holes along the bottom that you had to drill that were not there at all. So I had to clean up all those. And then I've gone through and I've started doing all the various dimpling on all those holes. There's a lot. Uh, so now, we're almost ready to put it back together. Uh, so that's gonna be in the next video, guys. Hey, thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, if you hit like and subscribe. If you guys want to ask questions of the four of us that are gonna be having this round table, please post those comments down below so that I can collect all those. Uh, that, vi that is coming together, I forget the date. I think in December is when that video is going to come out. I'll have all the links and whatnot for that uh, later, but please ask down below. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, if you jump over to my Patreon page for as little as a dollar a month, you guys can help support me, think of buying me a cup of coffee over the internet. And finally, like I say every single time, if you wanna build a Vans aircraft, you can. If I can build an aircraft, you can build an aircraft, and I will happily answer any question I can. It doesn't matter which aircraft, with it, from the RV3 all the way up to the RV, 15 whenever it shows its head. If you use my builder number, which is down below, Vans will send me a hundred bucks. It's no money out of your pocket. It's just a way to say thank you. So anyways, guys, thank you. I really appreciate you. I'm going to continue to putter for a bit. Uh, then I'm going to go home. I'm tired. I'll see you next time.